I don't see myself as anything spectacular. I'm kind of just doing something I enjoy and trying to, you know, find other people that a lot. I mean, I get a lot of comments saying people enjoy my videos, and that's enough for me to keep doing it. So that's all that yeah. matters, really. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Inner Sleeve, the podcast taking a behind the scenes look at all things music. I'm Cassius Morris, my co-host Joe Pacheco joining me on the line. What's up, Joe? Doing good, my man. How are you doing? Feeling phenomenal, man. It's been a, a fun, exciting end to the summer. We've seen so many different festivals and concerts, and I got to say, it, it just feels good to be having that back. So I know summer's ending, but I still feel rather optimistic going into this next season. Yeah, I caught a couple of shows at the beginning of the summer season, but then like I didn't really catch much throughout the season. I've seen a lot of stuff. We've all seen like uh, it's like we're inundated with uh, yeah. with uh, uh, opportunities and shows to go see. But my bank account just won't let me go see them all. <laughs> That's right. My bank account has a lot to say about that. We're very yeah. happy to be joined today by an awesome guest on this episode of Inner Sleeve. We have the man himself, Guitar Zach, stopping by to join us. Of course, if you're part of the guitar community or rock community on TikTok, you're probably familiar with this young man. He's an mm -hmm. awesome artist awesome player who puts up daily videos to social media. We chatted with him about his approach, how he got started, and where he sees himself in the future with his guitar. You guys are not going to want to miss this one. Hopping over to a little bit of music news, we wanted to change things up a little bit with this brand new segment featuring some of our predictions on the upcoming music biopics set to be released through 2023 and 2024. Now, we have the list right here, Joe, and I'm not sure if any of these particularly stood out to you or I mean, I think most of them are pretty well, exciting. Yeah, I mean, like we just got this before recording. So we're like we're looking into it. But yeah, definitely. As soon as I saw Leonard Bernstein, I was thinking right away, all the musicals, right? And the classical music uh, that is as a conductor. So West Side, West Side Story, sorry, Peter Pan and more. Uh, what is it here? Producing with among directors Steven Spielberg and Martin Scorsese. Hmm. It's wow. definitely going to so, be. Why would you need more producers if you have those guys? I wonder. Yeah, I don't know, man. But uh, no, very cool. Like, uh, looking forward to this one. Uh, Bob Dylan. I mean, wow, for sure. And they've Paul already George. done a Bob Dylan biopic too. So, I, I, have you yeah. seen the one where he was played by a bunch of people? No, I don't think I have. I've yet to see that one too. But there was Kate Winslet, and there was like ma males and females playing him all through this oh. movie. So, I mean, I'm curious how they're going to be able to top this. But it says that the production is on hold due to COVID-19, or I guess it's probably close to back now. Yeah, I would I would assume. But yeah, definitely looking forward to that because like, I mean, I've always heard of Bob Dylan and I've always listened to Bob Dylan, even like, you know, as a kid with, you know, cassettes, learning some of those songs and stuff. Uh, but I've never really like dove into like his story and like why, he, you know, he became the folk legend that he became, you know? So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I definitely feel that way with the Boy George documentary, too, by the way. Yeah. Uh, speaking of someone who I'm, I think we're all familiar with, at least visually or, or maybe hearing one of his songs. So this is a guy, too, though. I don't know why he became Boy George. Well, I remember I was like, I think eight or nine years old when Karma Chameleon came out and it was just so different. So I was already into like the whole Motley Crue. So the glam stuff was already, you know, and he was just like the pop version of the glam, you know, very, all the makeup and the, the, the crazy outfits. But <clears throat> I mean, I was young, so I really didn't pay attention to that more than that. It's just the songs were great, man. You know, like I just always enjoyed the songs and he was obviously beloved by like millions and millions of fans worldwide. So, uh, huh? I'd love to see the backstory of this guy as well. I think the hardest uh, one on this list, at least based off what I'm reading now, might have to be Michael Jackson because, I mean, we've seen it done on yeah. TV, right, Joe? We've seen it done in different variations, yeah. but who can actually take on that feature film portrayal, I wonder? I wonder. I don't know. It doesn't mention? Does it mention it here? Um, it doesn't no. look like it. No. Martin Scorsese previously worked with the producer on it. Yeah. The and it's going to be produced by movie. the Oscar winning producer of Bohemian Rhapsody. So that should be good. Yeah. Uh, maybe a different take, you know, like a uh, different, more of on the career of instead of maybe the life of. I'm not sure. Yeah. But we'll see. No doubt. Uh, Bee Gees. Definitely interesting. Ooh. Bee Gees. Now, the documentary for the Bee Gees was very captivating. I've never been a huge Bee Gees guy. I think it makes sense, like, sort of out of my yeah. realm but uh the documentary was fascinating and to see that portrayed in a biopic i think would be very very cool if you guys haven't seen that i highly recommend it the the hbo doc I'm definitely gonna check that out 
Teddy, Teddy Pendergrass. Pendergrass. Now, this was a dude, he was one of the classic, like, sort of, if you're sitting back with a glass of wine, right? You listen to Teddy Pendergrass? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm definitely it. Like, not I, familiar. I'm not familiar either, but I, I obviously have heard the name. I've always, like, uh, you know, heard the reputation of, of uh, but, like, is it? He's taking on the life in RBI. Oh, so it's going to be Tyrese Gibson taking on the life of, and, and uh, yeah, taking on the life RB icon, Teddy, Teddy Pendergrass. So definitely going to check that one out as well. Um, Cause I really don't know much, you know, about the background. Now this one, <laughs> we, we all, this know, one is we gonna all be have a an doozy. opinion that we've all known, but this was an adaptation of John Lennon and Yoko Ono's epic love story has been in the works for years. The script was written by, so it seems like the same crew, eh? a lot of Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody. They just want to keep uh, making them. Yeah, even here I saw the name like uh, uh, Logan as well. Um, here it has John Logan. Yeah, Spielberg again. So like, yeah, it's a lot of like uh, uh, interesting, like maybe teams that are like focusing on making you know, a more uh, biopics of legendary. Because like, I mean, look, we, we're losing them as they go, right? Like Van Halen's gone. I would love to see a Van Halen, yeah. one, obviously, you know that kind of stuff. Speaking of Amy Winehouse, such wow. a short, such a short career, but what an impact! Like what? So an insane. It, it, it's yeah. you're right. I mean, it's crazy to think that people name her in the same sentence as a Whitney Houston, as you know, all these people. And yeah, she was only doing it for you know maybe ten years, not including the years she was famous all completely. That's it. So I mean, it's insane. Yes. This Definitely next one here is something that stands out to me because I had no clue they were going to be making this, and and it's it's almost yep. I think when you're at this age, you're like in your mid forties, and you're getting a biopic made that sort of cements the living legend status. And I think Gucci Mane has definitely reached that status from being locked up for murder. Uh, actually, I think he got charged for murder and not convicted uh, to beating his drug addiction to all the wild stuff that's happened to this guy. This movie is is bound to be uh, one of the biggest comeback stories, I think, in, in the biopic uh, season, which will be good to see. Hmm. Here's like uh, producing the film about the trap house artist who started his career by releasing mixtape while he was in prison. <laughs> yeah see that's insane and he has like a hundred tapes behind, that's it i'm <laughs> saying like an entrepreneur behind bars you know uh bob marley like i mean i know there was there was one i watched quite a while ago but maybe we definitely need an update well i definitely think so and, and especially since it's going to be played by his son it looks like ziggy marley uh, or, or it looks like the the will have input no, no. by ziggy yeah because here it's kingsley ben Adir. okay yeah, yeah. So wow. Uh, well, I mean, listen. The family is obviously going to be the the people you want to consult here, and and I'm sure that, given the care in which his sons do their music and and any documentary they've participated in, I think this will be executed quite well. Yeah, looking forward to that one because, like, I, I I'm assuming this is going to be. I, I wonder if it's going to be like acted, right? Are biopics like when they're like like the Elvis one where there's an that's actor what I'm thinking. Portrayed? Yeah. Ah, so this is going to be interesting. Yeah, I definitely like to see. Uh, this one, Madonna. I mean, I'm surprised there hasn't been already one yeah. a long time ago kind of thing. You know, like she pretty much, you know, like the whole set that the, I mean, obviously she wasn't the originator of that, but she was the one who set like that whole, um, you know. Solo female. Middle, yeah. Middle finger up to the, the establishment. I do what I want to do and, you know, set the road for all the Lady Gagas and everybody that came after her, you know, so. And uh, what was she in New York? Was it New York or New Jersey? She's based. It was based. I, on yeah, it, so. she was definitely in that that area. And I mean, it's it's hard yeah. to compare anybody like you're saying to the success of Madonna or to the scale really of it. Uh, you know, completely starting a basically an entire movement. And it looks like they have participation from the Juno script writer Diablo Cody. Uh, so that's mm. going to be definitely interesting. A lot yeah. of like you're saying, Joe. A lot of big powerhouse writers and producers here. Yeah, and like I mean, I remember reading article uh, in, in, in a, like a recording magazine and stuff like about like the making of the like a virgin and the, the, those sessions and how they put it together and stuff, which was interesting. But we really don't get to see much. I hope they have they're gonna like, you know, we don't get to see of how it was done in the studio and stuff like that. So it's gonna be interesting this one because like I mean, this I grew up with it, so like I know the whole story. I I, I was there the whole time, so that's what for me personally makes it more interesting because it's people that I grew up with that I get to like let's see if they nail it yeah yeah you know what I mean <laughs> usually I've always been watching the Led Zeppelin ones I wasn't around you know when Zeppelin was around those type of things the Beatles right so like this is fun I'm uh, it obviously ages me, but it's like still fun to kind of sort of see my life <laughs> in musical yeah. terms you know man a hundred percent so this next one must really be hitting then 
Yeah, Lemmy for sure. Like uh, yes. to be honest, like I know, I mean, I you know of Lemmy. I never was um, a fan of of his band. You know, like uh, what's the band called again? Motorhead. Uh, Motorhead. Yeah, I. I I never, like I said, I always say this, you know, I never really dug in more than that, but right. the guy was a fantastic songwriter as well because he wrote a lot of songs for other artists, especially like, you know, I know personally of like um, Hellraiser on the uh, Aussies um, uh, No More Tears album, which was And Mama, I'm Coming a, Home. Yeah, exactly. What brilliant songs. They're it's great. Insane. You know? So definitely. And, and we seen like what there was one, he died in 2015 and I had, I remember we had saw on Netflix, there was another documentary about him, which was really interesting, which I saw. So uh, I want to see someone play him yeah, like this, you know? So this is going to be interesting. I'm very curious to see what we're going to get from this. And I mean, it's because, you know, Lemmy, such a such a guy who we never really knew how he really felt. Like he was more of the character. I'm curious yeah. to see how he was behind closed doors when he went home, because you can't always be that, you know, fearless, oh, untouchable. It says here, follow him for early life in England, his time as a roadie for Jimi Hendrix. In the first wow. five years he spent with rock band Hawkwind. That's an interesting mm. band a lot of people should listen to. I've listened like I've listened to a few albums and it's very interesting. Um, they went on to become like in much bigger bands individually, everybody in Hawkwind, right? Most likely, yeah. That's what I think it is, you know. But I never heard of them until a friend said Check out his band Hawkwind. I'm like, I never heard. I didn't know he had another. I always knew him as Motorhead, right? Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. This one's going to be a, definitely a must watch. Heart. Wow. Wow. This is a, okay. I, I didn't see this one coming, but this is no. definitely due. That's for sure. Now, I wonder how much they're going to focus on the guys in the band. Because the one thing yeah. about Heart is like, I don't even know those guys' names, to be honest with you. Same here, man. And <laughs> I've been listening to them forever. And I don't know a single guy besides Anne and uh, Nancy Wilson. That's true. That's a good point. And, and in a way, it's kind of cool because it's usually the reverse, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the guy, the lead singer, whatever. And, you know, actually, to be honest, there wasn't many iconic female rock stars back in the day like they were, you know? and Totally. Stevie Nicks and who else, really? Yeah. That was like it, almost. Yeah, I'm sure there was. Lita Ford, I, mean, just, I guess. Yeah, no, but this is like a different status. This is like really like, and they're still being played like crazy. And I'm, you know, so I'm surprised there hasn't been a movie about them yet. Already done. It's going to be cool to see. Now, maybe for a wild card, who would you pick that wasn't on this list that you'd like to see get a biopic? Oh, that's a good question. And I, I, since I threw you on the spot, I can give my answer since I had okay, a second to think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would say ABBA. I think mm. ABBA would be, I mean, I just have no clue how you get together and, and write. So I, I kind of can understand how you get together <laughs> and jam like a band. But how yeah. do you get together and write songs like that that go on to be in musicals? I think that would be fascinating to see. Maybe also like in the fact that it was in the 70s. It's not like today where you can share files, open my session That's or it. whatever. So, yeah, it definitely had to be more organized. Complex. And, yeah, let me think. Someone, because I mean, like, you know, the obvious answers, but we've they've already been done all these movies. But yeah, ABBA is a good one. Let's think something. Uh, Ozzy, I'd love to see oh, an Ozzy. An official. Uh, well, you know what? Maybe they could get the guy from the Dirt who played him for like that one scene <laughs> to do the whole snorting, Ozzy movie. Sn snorting ants. Like, <laughs> yeah, <come on>. so <laughs> gross. <laughs> I don't know if that guy nailed it too good either, but he, he was okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. Jumping over to the Sound Mojo comms tab. This is, of course, where we post questions and polls to see what you guys are listening to and what you want us to listen to. We're going to be reacting to you guys' suggestions in just a moment. But first, we wanted to read your answers to this question where we ask, who is the best female singer of all time and why? And of course, the legend herself as the photo here as well-deserved. Yeah, well deserved. And I think like if you look through the comments, which thank you everyone for participating. We've got some nice comments. Um, We've got a couple of them that mention uh, <laughs> uh, Whitney Houston because it's obvious. So That's right. let's go. We'll go from down up. Uh, Amy Lee from um, oh, now I'm drawing a blank. Evanescence. Evanescence. That's it. Uh, definitely, definitely like recognizable for sure. Like in the sense, you know, like I, I, I think I can. If she would release an unknown album and like sing the way she normally sings, I think I would recognize her. Definitely. Uh, we have a few Olivia Newton Johns. I'm really oh. honestly I'm surprised about that because I don't think of her as like a you know a female singer and like not in an insulting way, but I mean like in the Whitney Houston kind of way. Sorry, as a technical singer, there. definitely. Yeah, but like great songs, great songwriting. It's true, and I think of Greece. I mean, like you have yeah. to be a good singer to be able to pull a lot of that stuff off. 
Um, Very natural was, sounding song, you know, songs yeah. that they made. Like it sounded more like somebody you would talk to on the street than a than a super talented, you know, technical vocalist. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just like you know, the good singer. And you know, I'll, yeah. I'll, well, some of the suggestions have similar vibes in the sense of like where I love it when it's like you're a good singer, but it's not showing that you're a good singer. You're not like always trying right. to do these, uh, all, these the, all the stuff. crazy Just stuff. sing the yeah. song. <laughs> Just sing the song. Like when I watch sometimes American Idol, which is rare, or any of those type of shows, and it's like, can we just sing the song? Sing the melody? That's you know, right. Do all these crazy runs and like try to be like Aretha <laughs> and try to be like, and uh, don't get me wrong, there's some fantastic singers on that show for sure, but it's like, just sing the song, man. Well, I <laughs> think know? the best example of that is Paul McCartney. You know, yeah. like he, he's yeah. not a, you know, Huh. virtuoso singer but he's known as a phenomenal singer just within his own thing but he doesn't go for the big the big runs you know that's it you know so we have melissa thomas gladys knight definitely oh, not familiar good. like i mean i've heard that name all my life for sure but not uh too familiar with like the the catalog uh sullivan atmos whitney houston uh wow. not donald fagan sade that's for oh, sure. okay of course that's for sure uh, judy garland way yeah judy garland was definitely alicia uh sorry i Akalia, Akalia Saraya, yeah, Judy Garland. That's definitely like uh, a legend, you know, like from way back. Aretha Franklin. Totally. I mean, I mean, no doubt there. Stevie yeah. Nicks. See, classic rock. Travis Stivers, uh, Robert Robert Lucas. <laughs> you go, girl. I miss you. I love you. Oh. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, oh, I guess because of the picture. Maybe. Poor Whitney. Yeah, he's like you yeah, go, girl. Yeah, yeah. Um, me in the shower. Probably the best comment. Uh, <laughs> I like that, ma. <laughs> ma mami est morte. That means my mommy is dead. So just oh, let me know. Or my grandma is dead. That's, <laughs> That's horrible. Me. Peter Wood, Olivia Newton John, voice of an angel. Nice. Uh, Sean Gagnon, uh, Wound Socket, Rhode Island. R Roberta Flack. Why? Because she is. <laughs> okay, I don't you know, know her funny. actually. I always, I know that name from from a lot of let's say more electronica uh, artists like uh, trip hop stuff that sample. Her stuff, Rebecca okay. Flack, or even have her on, you know, spoken word kind of stuff. That kind of stuff I've listened to. Barbara, oh, uh, that's, that's the French artist, Barbara, I guess. Or, I'm not sure. Uh, Whitney, for sure. And Selena. Okay. Uh, Selena, is it the singer Selena with an S or is that Celine Dion? <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, good question. Oh, I think go. she meant Selena. I think so as well. Or maybe there's another Selena we don't know of. Yeah, maybe Lorenzo. a third. Yeah, Lorenzo Pignanoli. Welcome back. Uh, Celine Dion, honorable mention. Dolores O. Riordan. I'm not hmm. sure who that is. Okay. Should I look it up. That's a new Oops. name for me. Oh, there you go. Uh, Irish musician. The oh, th that's the girl from the, the Cranberries? Okay. Yes. I didn't know so her there we name, go. but yeah, definitely uh, definitely original. I didn't know like, she you know, passed away either. I'm not sure. Like, it doesn't. Oh, there it is. The Cranberries. Duh. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, she passed away. And just before, like, that, 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 there's a band that did the cover of that song. Um, zombies and she was mm -hmm. supposed to actually sing on their cover of it but she passed away just before oh, going to the studio man. yeah no yeah. kidding eh? uh, yeah uh Fandom i like linger Outlast. by the cranberries by the way that i think that one's underrated just throwing it out there yeah, yeah the cranberries were awesome and like a breath of fresh air in the 90s you know like yeah. they just came out of nowhere you know um Haley nicole williams paramore singer oh fuck she's very iconic yeah as well, like in terms of like yeah, it's just she's always been around, always been really good, and people just love. But I also love Katy Perry singing as well. Me too. Hmm, that's a so good I'm pick. Going with those two female singers, and those are his top two. All right, Michelle Farrell. I always loved it. Lydia Newton John. Hey, another one, man. Pat Benatar, definitely a rock nice. singer from the '80s. Stevie Nicks, Stevie Nicks, sorry, Mariah Carey. Surprise! I'm surprised she hasn't been mentioned. Yeah. Barbara Streisand, Celine Dion for sure, Reba McIntyre, Barbara Mandrell, and so many others. Definitely, man. Wow. So, hey, cool. I'm surprised. Mariah Carey should have, you know, I was expecting Seriously. to like see her more. World record breaking notes here. <laughs> Only the voice, Whitney Houston by Susanna Burson. Uh, Christopher Van Vanio. Ann Wilson of Heart. We were just speaking of uh, Heart. Another Definitely Olivia Newton. Yeah, look at that, eh? Amazing, dude. Like, really? That's I'm insane. Considering that like, we have had three or four of Olivia and like so far one of Mariah, that's surprising. Man, even another. above it, another one. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Haunting voice, adorable. I guess the recent, uh, you know, like the recent uh, passing, you know, yeah. maybe brought it up. You know, like the streams go up and album sales go up and all that. So maybe uh, she also inspired singers like Taylor Swift, Mariah Carey, another mention, and even Madonna. So 
She likes wow. Taylor Swift, Sweet Innocent Pop, Edgy Rock from Mariah. So we have another Mariah. Uh, her similar vocal. Mariah even invited Olivia to sing Hopelessly Devoted while on tour in 1998. Really? This is awesome. This is cool to know. Shout out to Xanadom. Yeah, yeah. yeah Xanadom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we ask, what's your favorite time and place to listen to music? I think this is an interesting question. Why? <laughs> because for well, me, it's like anywhere is safe. I don't know. I guess that, that's true. I, you could make yeah. an easy answer with that. But for me, I think like late at night or early in the morning seems to be my standout time. I feel like there's something about the extreme times with music that can make it feel almost surreal in a way. So that's yeah, what I would me, go for. Yeah. For me, it's like all day, any day, anywhere, any time and place, obviously. But like there's... Like you said, like there's certain stuff that I'll listen to while I'm working that I don't want to take my attention too much away. I'm paying attention, but I'm also working. And then, like you said, if there's like more focused listening, then it's usually the evening. Uh, and like, you know, you want to have a nice little drink or hang out or maybe some video games. And like yeah. when I go on my walks, for sure. Uh, so let's see what our our friends had to say. So Mark Lee Fillion, Anytime Anywhere is a good place for music. So I agree. Uh, sweet and sour dish anywhere, whenever I go. <laughs> so there you That's go. going to be every answer everywhere Gaming at all Simmons. times. <laughs> I don't know. I listen to music damn near 24 <laughs> seven. So there you go. Same here. Anytime, anywhere, but especially in the car or the bus or at home when I do chores, that's a good way to like, you know, if you have yeah. to work out and, and you don't like working out or you have to do chores, pop in some earbuds. Or I can't work it. out without music. Well, yeah, I know. I mean, you know, it's just a nightmare. Just, so Sullivan Atmos. There you go. Sitting still in my room on my bed listening uh to me on my phone or my laptop so listen to <laughs> my man's phone. promoting his music right now yeah. hold on a second there you go <laughs> uh all day long another one anywhere i like music and i like sad music rock and other music so nice even some much, genres uh, in there maybe we should have been like uh what is your listening to music routines maybe that'll be another yeah. question in the sense like do you have a setup you know before you listen to music here we ask if you were recording an album and could hire anyone to produce it who would you go with? So a lot of options here. Yeah, music for all. Dr. Dre, of course. Well, that's nice. like uh, an A-lister of, of all A-listers. Uh, Game X Simmons depends on the genre, of course. Yeah, because like, yep. you know, you don't want like a hip guy, you know, hip hop. Not that they can't or, the, you know, you can't do multiple genres. But like, yeah, I definitely want someone who's in the genre. Uh, yay. No doubt. I wonder how it would be to work with him as he's producer. Like, he's a control freak, right? So can you imagine like... You being the artist, who knows? That's a great question. Yeah, I know he does a lot of production uh, for Pusha T. So, I mean, I, I think maybe mm. Pusha T could answer that question. Yeah. Uh, not Donald Fagan, Gary Katz. I'm not familiar with that name. For Gary some Katz. Reason. I know Barry Katz, the manager. I do not know Gary Katz. Maybe Let's it's his brother. See. American record producer. Oh, okay. So, Steely Dan. Okay. Okay. So, look at that. Yeah, classic albums, Steely Dan. So, he got so. that real good 80s vocal sound. Y like smooth as butter yeah. <laughs> production you know like because like every time i listen to a steely dad album it's like there's nothing wrong with anything on this that i'm hearing <laughs> you know it's yeah, just so exactly. clean and perfect you know and like oh amazing. they do it right melissa worth david foster i mean is there a bigger canadian producer man like why don't it, i know him offhand i feel like i definitely uh, know dude. a bunch of his music but oh my god you i don't <laughs> think you can throw a rock without hitting something he's produced yeah well wow, it's gonna be everything i like watch Oh, look, look at that Olivia like, Newton John. Speak of yeah, the yeah, speak yeah. of the angel. <laughs> Celine Dion. I mean, like wow. you're talking about like endless. I'm trying to find a spot like it's uh, an almost fire. Like this guy has been around, man. And like uh, Chicago, I remember because I watched a documentary Ooh. on him. So you have like hey, if we go to the, the credits here, this is studio, this is his stuff. But oh, okay. look at this. Ringo Starr, Neil Sadaka, Kim what? Carnes, Lynn George Skinner. Harrison. Donovan, yeah, George Harris, Rod Stewart, Dal Bello. That's like a. And this is just we're still haven't wow. hit the eighties yet. Dolly Parton, hit the eighties. Look, Living Newton John, Dolly Parton, like Paul Anka, Michael Jackson, off the wall. Oh, Imagine, dude, like this is like <laughs> Glenn Cal Aretha Franklin, Shaka Thriller. Khan, like Earth, Wind and Fire, Thriller. <laughs> Come on, okay, so see, I definitely am, I'm somewhat familiar with his work. I well, yeah, and you'll be familiar like later. Look, we're still in the eighties, bro. Like we're still in the eighties. That's 80s. crazy. This is freaking me out. Barbara Streisand. I wonder what he's done also, lately. Okay, here we go. Uh, Celine Dion, you know, like Barbara Streisand, Beth wow. Midler, Paul Anka, Tony Braxton, Mariah Carey, Michael Bublé. He discovered Michael Bublé. 
Somebody oh, told look him, at that. check this guy out, and he discovered him at a wedding. At, I think it was the, the former prime minister's wedding of Canada. Wow. So he, he, must, he must have been a popular wedding singer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it, right? So he was a wedding singer, and he was doing uh, Mulroney, Ben Mulroney's wedding. And they said, oh. check this singer out. And when he checked him out, I'll be honest, I would have passed on someone like Buble. Like, I wouldn't have seen the magic no. behind, and I would have lost... All that money, let's say, you know, like I think it's an enigma. His his success is like we don't yeah. really have singers of that style that are popular now. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like the fact that like he spotted like this is the guy now that I'm gonna latch myself onto and bring him to stardom is surprising. But anyway, like it's just like another M- Michael Bublé, Diana Krall, like the producer of producer Seal to Seal. Like Seal is one of my favorite artists. So Insane. Seal. Soul too. Sorry, what am I saying? I can't read. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this is just like, yeah, that's a good pick for sure. Uh, Alex Christensen, another one I'm not familiar with. Okay. Let's do a quick. Here is definitely like teaching us. Uh, that's right. A lot this of, is our, a our lot instructor. Of different artists. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's incredible, man. Um, so song. Okay, let's just hit like the Wikipedia, and let's see. Let's go to his discography. Okay, so here we go. So. Singles as Alex C. So not, okay, so he's probably very German, maybe. That's probably what it is. Yeah. I mean. But anyway, definitely probably someone to check out because if, if he or says it, I'm sure it's legit. I'm sure I'm it's a bunch it. of crazy material. Yeah, exactly. And Mark Lee Filion, you are my winner of the day. Mutt Lang, my, Mutt one of my Lang. favorite all-time producers. What hasn't uh, he produced? No, the question you is... Know? Has he produced anything that hasn't sold 10 million copies right. of over? <laughs> like, yeah. man, this guy, everything he touches. Can you make one bad album, please, sir? Like, <laughs> yes, please, please, so that we can all look <laughs> so I can good feel by better. comparison. <laughs> yeah. Man, but I mean, we're talking about some of the most legendary records, probably in music history. I mean, just going down the list here for some of the stuff that he's produced uh, Maroon 5, Hands All Over. Uh, Brian Adams, 18 Till I Die, Def Leppard, Adrenalize. I mean, you know, ACDC for those about to rock, Pyromania by Def Lepp. All the Actually, pretty much all the big Def Leppard albums were Mutt Lang, right? And, yeah, uh, well, well, I'd say that those those three, maybe like the three, uh, yeah, yeah. Pyromania, um, Hysteria, and the one after, maybe. I'm not sure about the one, Adrenalize. I, the, you saw Adrenalize? Yeah. Okay, so then, yeah, like Boomtown Rats, like, like the ACDC, just like Back in Black alone. That's ridiculous. Uh, you, you know, know? And you, like, you could retire probably just off that and continue to get work just off that, probably. Yeah, that's it. Billy you know? Ocean was huge back in the day. That flipper, Michael Bolton, Shania Twain. I mean, like he, you know, obviously he made her her career take off. Uh, but one that a lot of people don't know, which I'm trying to see if it's here. 1990. There you go. Brian Adams, Waking Up the Neighbors. This is oh, like wow. you, you you know that album. This is the album with that song there um, that everybody loves. Uh, well, Summer '69. No, no, this is after. Okay, um, this is two albums after that. Uh, what's that song? It was massive. Everything I do, I do it for you. Okay, yeah, of course. And but this album, you know, funny story for me personally. Like I remember, like listening to the radio at night, eleven o'clock, before going to bed, popping in, and and here in Montreal they would play like new albums that were coming out. So I missed the intro. I got on. I'm listening. I'm listening to this. It sounds really good. It was poppy stuff. And, and I thought, wow, these vocals. What? Did Def Leppard put on a new album? I was like, this sounds oh, like shit. Def Leppard. Yeah. And it ended wow. up being this album from uh, Brian Adams that was just I coming I can totally out, hear that. And it was produced by him, by uh, Matt Lang. So like, this is definitely a killer album for sure. But yeah, look, well, he's. The, I'm sure some of these haven't sold 10 million copies. So I think he's yeah. Eight. Uh, human, <laughs> human-like. You know, somewhat. But, uh, yeah, but definitely. Thank you for participating. Uh, this was a great, a good little poll. You know, like uh, to find out, you know, who people are into. So now we're going to hop over to you guys' music suggestions. Of course, we post every single week asking you guys to suggest music for us to listen to. And we come back on this segment of the show to let you know what we thought. And I think this batch, Joe, was maybe one of the most unique batches that we've had. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well said. You know, I'm just tripping on the uh, uh, Wayne yeah. world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I don't know how he this didn't was... break his neck for making that movie with all the head banging he did. Uh, I know, seriously. But yeah, so this one, yeah, we got a lot of suggestions and a lot of like uh, interesting stuff, like more original. Well, not more original, but just different. A lot of like uh, a motley crew, as we would say, of uh, <laughs> different That's right. uh, things. So we'll start off with John Johnson, which, by the way, if you'd like, you could go check out some of his music on Sound Mojo. Um, 
I'll link it up here. And uh, so his first suggestion, Son Lux, or Son Lux, a different kind of love. I've heard this name a lot. Uh, I wasn't familiar with it, but like, you know, I love the fact that there was intimate vocals, great atmosphere in the arrangement, very sparse, you know, which gave a lot of room for the vocals. And I love that the arrangement is unorthodox. Like it's just, it's not like, it didn't seem like it was a chorus verse, chorus verse kind of thing. Uh, Point North Hammer. What did you think of this mm, one? Yes. These, this one was interesting, Joe, because it's sort of like a pop punk. I don't know exactly. What do they call this, Joe? Is is scene music still a term? Scene music? S scene music? Because I've heard that that describing mm. like this sort of really poppy punk music. But I don't know if I'm mm. using the right term. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, this definitely gave me uh, vibes reminiscent of that, of the all-time low uh, kind of bands that we had back in the earlier 2010s. I'm mm -hmm. trying to think of other examples. Maybe that's exactly what I put on here. 2010s vibe, you know. Yeah. I, I I really enjoyed the song. I thought it was really good, catchy, and like you know, I would definitely listen to it with no problems. Uh, rock always puts me in a good mood, you know. And that that's type no of vibe. And honestly, I felt like running to get my skateboard when I was listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be appropriate. One of the things yeah. I found with this one too is that even though it's a rock punk song, it, it was almost reminiscent to me of a modern day rap song. I was immediately thinking of artists like Trippy Red or like Juice oh. World. And I think it's it's interesting to, to think about how much these new rappers, Joe, they take from the early pop punk guys, especially because I think they listen to a lot of that stuff. Skateboarding, maybe, you know, you're exposed right. to, uh, you know, and those things. Yeah, definitely. I noticed that too. Like I noticed, like I've said it before, even some of the poppiest of poppiest production, some of their, like what I call punches is like when you have like a, you know, like, a stop it or break in a song, you know, or like, uh, like Master of Puppets, right? Dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun. Those are kind of punches. <laughs> but I noticed a lot of those, but not with guitars, but like with other instruments in some of the breakdowns or just leading up to the chorus in, in modern production over the years. So I definitely agree with you in the sense that for sure there was an influence that influenced how these guys are doing their genre of music. It's kind of sort of the way it's supposed to work, I guess, right? <laughs> 100%. The evolution keeps going, right? Which is, which is ultimately ultimately what we want and then we'll see new genres continue to to grow out of that uh the so, modest mouse track yeah this one so, was called guilty cocker spaniels you know <laughs> I, I was sort of tripped out by the song joe because the guy had like the vocalist had this mad hatter kind of unhinged vocal style to him that that really hooked you in yeah yeah, it hooks you in and like, whoa, what's going on here a bit, you know? Uh, I mean, this name has been around for a long time. Uh, yeah. I know a little a couple of songs here and there. Um, but yeah, I love that. The one point where like the guitar and the bass, they line up, they're doing the same kind of thing with a big fuzz guitar tone. I like that kind of stuff. So that was cool. Yeah. Thing. Really cool. That um, awesome distorted kind of vibe. You know, for me, the, yeah. the music video that stood out the most, I, I did like the song as well, but mm -hmm. it was for Message to Myself. Um, which was by oh, yeah. Easy Life. Now, this features some really cool animation, which immediately looking at it gave me Adult Swim, sort of cartoon networky kind of vibes. He has his little pet fish. And not knowing this artist from Adam Joe, I was actually drawn in and, and very much entertained oh. by this and wanting to learn more. Same here. This was my first time ever hearing and listening to this. And I thought, too, the video was awesome, uh, really well done. Uh, the vocals threw me off a bit at first. It was just like a bit quirky, which I like, you know, and it threw me off a bit. But the arrangement and the mix was wicked. Like some of the instruments, the elements that were happening in the in the background were like unorthodox, not normally like what you hear in sort of, the, you know, this kind of music. Uh, yeah. And the mix just was on another level. Like there was a nice low end that came in once in a while, like a bass line, but it wasn't throughout the whole song. Uh, and, you know, what is this genre? <laughs> it's just so... Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't define it. It's hmm. really cool. It's like well, that's, a bit that's of, the main question. There's like, you know, hip hop kind of vibes because of the, you know, some of the beat. And, but like, I just don't know. I don't know what kind of a genre it is. It's cool. Man, I like that a lot. And the next one here, speaking of confusion, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think this one was the definition the Felice brothers or the Fellas brothers. I'm not sure how we're saying that. Um, yeah, I would say Fire Felice, at the I pageant. So. Felice? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this video for po Fire at the Pageant, if you guys haven't seen this and you want to trip out, I highly <laughs> recommend you look it up because I was almost flabbergasted yeah. at this video. We were both watching it together. And we were like, oh, what's happening? What's happening over here? You know, like, so confused. And, yeah. And like I put here, like, as my remote, this one's my most original song, arrangement, sound, vibe, genre, whatever you want uh, of the bunch that we've got uh, suggested today. Creepy intro and also has a, interesting like 
southern vibe, but I really liked when the the children's choir was there. It always adds like a weird element when you have like kids singing, you know? Yeah, definitely an eerie kind of weird vibe. Yeah. And then we have, okay, so that was it. So thanks for uh, John Johnson for uh, all those cool suggestions. Uh, here, this is definitely always something like uh, special with him. So Hildegard von Blingen. I knew I know Hildegard <laughs> von Bingen as like medieval kind of like almost um, Gregorian chant kind of music, medieval yeah. stuff. But this is Hildegard von Blingen Jolene cover. So obviously a cover of uh, Dolly Parton's Jolene. What'd you think? This was so weird to me because I was prepared to be <laughs> bored to sleep and annoyed. And I put it on and I, I was like, you know what? This isn't all that bad. You know, I, I, I like it, it. It I feel like the any music like this in movies, I think, is a touch over exaggerated. And I think that mm. if a person is doing it just to make the music and is outside of a movie, maybe they make it take it a little more seriously. So I think it, it didn't sound as cartoonish as maybe other versions. Yeah, well, this person, Hildegard von Blingen, this artist has like, I think it was 800,000 subscribers. So, I mean, obviously, it's someone who's doing it like seriously, like they're probably, you know, releasing albums and doing stuff. I thought it was cool. Like it was just a medieval take. It's not something I would listen to every day, but there's, you know, a certain vibe where like I could listen to something like that, you know? No um, question. How about postmodern jukebox? What did you think well, of, uh, of these guys? I've, I, I'm familiar with them from doing okay. crazy covers over the years, like seeing them on Facebook and on YouTube and stuff. And obviously they have 5 million subs. So like they're doing well. Uh, all I know is every time I anything that they do, I might not be into the song, or I might not like you know binge them, uh, watch this kind of stuff because like I'm kind of a bit tired of covers all the time. But everything is done to like the best quality, the best 100%. singers, best musicians. The lighting is wicked. The mix sounds incredible. You know, like so like it's it's really well done. Definitely worth checking these guys out. What did you think? I think everything from the outfits to the aesthetic, like you're saying, to the, to the staging, you know, the way that the, the vocalist was the main guy and, you know, the band was sort of more in the shadows. I mean, that that classic sort of approach and setup, I think it, it was yeah. very reminiscent of something, again, like you would see in a movie and, and but yeah. also done a little more seriously and a little more suave, you know? Yeah, I mean, we we checked out "You Somebody," right? Which was a soul, a soul version of it. And as soon as he sang, I forgot it was featured by someone. But as soon as he sang, it was so like I don't know, obviously soul, but like still had like the respect, like and still did what the original singer also pronounced some of those notes. So I thought that was really cool. You know, it doesn't take you away from the original; it just adds to it and, and definitely like complements it. You know. Um, he said here, their live shows, the live shows are awesome and so much fun and energy. I've never gotten to see them live. I can only imagine. I mean, it's that like would be like so a, cool. I've never like seen anything a, like that live. Yeah, that's it. So, me too. Yeah, exactly. So it'd be like watching a big band. And I wonder if they'd have like a different, ca like a bunch of singers, like a cast of five, six singers that mm. do different things. Maybe um, one day at a so. jazz fest or something, we could catch them. Yeah. So definitely thanks for that. Um, oh, yeah. He also here also suggested Ozone Dragostea Tinde. Which, well, I guarantee you, once you listen, if you guys search this up, once you listen to it, it's gonna be stuck in your head forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. The catchiest so, song ever made. The video is hilarious, like cheesy, cringy, you know, right? Uh, these guys on a plane uh, singing this song, uh, and like, but it's just a massive global hit. Like, you can't. You and there's can, a lot of versions of this, right? Tons, yeah. There's tons of remixes, you know, like that. As was the norm back then, you made a remix of everything. So yeah, there was tons of this stuff, you know. But it's. It's funny. It was like a nice. I was afraid to press play because I knew the song, but I was afraid <laughs> to press play because like I don't want to be singing this all day, you know. I had a childhood um, friend who was obsessed with that song, so th yeah. th that just gives me flashbacks every single time. That's it. So we ha next we have PDSSR Gaming, and this guy might have might have stolen some records from my collection over here. <laughs> uh, we have Iron Maiden's Killers. I mean, like that probably was yeah. my first exposure to Iron Maiden. The that punk like, maiden, the, the like yeah. street, street sort of back alley yeah. steampunk. Yeah, it was awesome. And like, uh, and you know, those type of vocals, the bass line sounds very tribal punk, tribal to me. Uh, and definitely was my introduction to uh, Iron Maiden for sure. And then like Number of the Beast just like sealed it in for me. But this album, if you listen to the Killers album, it's awesome to listen to. It's like the first yeah. Def Leppards where it's not like the usual Def Leppards that we've come to know. It's literally rock you know acdc totally. meets queen this is like punk iron maiden right 100%. Uh, 
Signals by Rush. So this, we weren't Ooh, sure this if, well, obviously it's the album, right? So as soon as I pressed play, Cassius was like, oh, I'm familiar with this, but not familiar, but I love sound of uh, subdivisions that song was like i played it as a kid in my bands and stuff always loved it but honestly like a big rush fan but not familiar with the rest of the album in terms of like where i can tell you something about song four or track five yeah have to listen the rest to it of the album is hit and miss well yeah i guess so like i can't even say if it's hit or miss I, I don't know if i'm a fan of this album or a, a not but like i'm usually a fan of all rush albums you know but um, I think they're pretty sick. I actually got to see this song live when they came uh, to Calgary. I went to Calgary to see them on their last tour. And uh, I think it was fun. I think it definitely reminded the, a lot of the people who were in high school at that time uh, of their younger times. Like my dad loves that song. And he, well, uh, when I was going to see them, he'd walk around singing it. Yeah. Well, there's something about Rush that like I just have like uh, the respect for like the fact that they're three and yeah. they don't move on without the three. And they you sound know, like a like hundred. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, like, in the fact that, like, now that you're not gonna, you might have Rush with some guest drummers, but they're not gonna do Rush because it's done. Like, it was the three of them, you know? And I love that mutual respect they have for each other. Like, we're brothers, we do this, you know, and and, and then we do it together. Moving on, um, Duran Duran, Rio. I mean, Duran Duran. Oh, I love awesome. this song. You know what? Awesome. I forgot how much I liked songs like this, Joe. And I think, yeah. shout out to, to PDSSR because uh, you kind of reminded me of it. I mean, the, the smooth, everything about it is smooth. Yeah, well, I, I grew up in this era, and uh, every single they put out was just amazing, uh, awesome. I always liked it. I was, you know, I never, you know, like, I'm not a crazy Duran Duran, you know, more into Tears for Fears and other similar kind mm. of guys, but, like, Duran Duran. The one thing I noticed as we were listening to this together, because, uh, you know, now I have it in my ears, so I get to hear all the details, and I never paid attention how, like... Like I kind of did. They I, they're like very musician guys, but the songs don't show off that they're musicians and they're playing because the bass line on this right. song is awesome. It's so busy, which you wouldn't see in a normal pop song. It would just be like, okay, hold the beat, keep it simple. But this moves and and is busy. So that's what I love about it. That's why I said before, I love it when stuff is sneaky, kind of like, um, um, I don't know how to say it, like uh, understated, maybe. Yeah, exactly. But like sneaky good players, but. It, you can't really tell unless you really pay attention, you know? Totally. I and I think that's one of the main elements about Duran Duran, like you're saying. Like yeah. they, they managed to marry that so that yeah. a real music head could like it, but also a person who doesn't know Jack about music could also appreciate it, which I think yeah. is the trademark of a of a good mainstream artist. Yeah, and I think that a lot of those 80s artists, maybe not the super popular ones, but there's a lot of the British ones and a lot of that were like that. They were musicians, but they wrote pop tunes uh well-constructed pop tunes but like like the police when you think of it yes. they're all massive musicians but those songs are just amazing you're not paying attention to the fact that his hi-hats patterns are just so unique you know like exactly. they're just so amazing but yet they are incredible musicians individually and together obviously more of a subconscious thing to keep yeah. you interested that's it yeah exactly candy o by the cars the Cars, I mean, like, they're amazing, like a uh, legendary band. I feel like um, they're a super underrated band. Is that fair to say? I think in today's day and age, yeah. Like, my, you know, you can name the Cars to people and they wouldn't know. But back then, you knew of the Cars. And they had, Mutt Lang, again, produced one of their biggest albums, like, in the 80s. I'm not sure if it's this album, but maybe the album after this. Um, but yeah, what did you think of this song? I think it was really cool and unique. Definitely different because I, I listened to the first Cars album. So that was my my only real impression of them. And this was a lot more evolved and advanced. And I think a lot more for the time mm. that it was released. Like I, I feel like their their older stuff was a lot more just very straightforward, meat and potatoes, classic rock. This felt like it had a lot more elements and depth to it to me. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like me too. I didn't, like I know the song, but I never paid attention again, like to the riffs and like, what's going on. One thing I liked about these guys, um, especially in the 80s, when I was introduced, there was a lot more keyboards and synths. But like in this case, it's not like keyboards where it's like ding, 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 like, you know, little exactly. sound. It's a fat, like Deeper. synth synth sound arpeggiated with the guitars and it works, you know? And one thing I loved about the guitar lines, I, it are so awesome and fuzzy. Like you said, more there's more elements and layers to this one, you know, than than the older stuff. A lot more dynamic. Yeah, 100 percent And we'll move on to HWC Transgender Ministries. Uh welcome back. And uh, Truth and Lies City Lights. So Oh, this was the one that I actually I found that the beat on this one was insane. Like 
I think we were talking about this oh. too, Joe. Like when they manage to hit that certain vibe with a housey kind of thing, and it That's can it. also have that depth that we're talking about. I think it's perfect. Yeah, for me, like this song was really good. It reminds me of like I don't know if you ever searched because you know like you want some free music for your YouTube videos, you can search up a uh, YouTube audio library, right? Okay. And there's a ton of this genre on there because it's you know for vlogs and people to use them. But it reminded me a bit of that. But that's like, I don't want to insult uh, uh, truth and lies. But, I hear what you're saying. But it's good. Like the stuff that you find on the audio library is good. But I love this, like we're saying, house beat. It's so like the production was killer on this, like super clean. And that synth bass line, I just love it. I just love that, that those type of, like they, they're almost it's funky. Yeah. And they're almost funky. They're almost like the hook. It's the bass line. It's weird, you know? No doubt. Um, Do we have any more? Yeah, we have a couple more, two more. Uh, let's do Little Sims. Sometimes I might be an introvert. This oh, yes, Little Sims. This this was an artist I actually discovered on Colors. So shout out to the show Colors. Oh. If you guys aren't familiar, um, you know, an incredible show. We've actually had Jenya Franca on the show uh, who's on, been yeah. on Colors as well. But yeah, definitely, this is probably one of the more unique female rappers, I would say, Joe, because she doesn't come into it from the typical perspective of, of trying to use trademark sort of beauty standards and, and femininity to, to sell herself. She sort of does the opposite. She goes for the aggressive, she goes for the content and everything from her visuals to her style, to her aesthetic, I think is really, really raising the yeah. bar in general for hip hop. Yeah. I know. Like I just, I never heard of little Sims, never heard of anything. <laughs> and then I pressed play on this video and the visuals were like right away. Wow. Insane. Like, we both were saying, holy cow, these visuals are crazy. And then, like, one thing I noticed right off the bat, nothing was, like, in terms of, like, the build-up with the music, it worked perfectly. And then she comes in at, like, at one point, I remember I pressed pause because I knew it was building up to something. And I'm like, what do you think it's going to be? Like, do you think yeah. it's going to be a rock song, a pop song, or a hip-hop song? I had picked hip-hop, which ended up being right. And, like, you weren't sure. but I, I wasn't like, sure at all. <laughs> yeah, I said yeah. either hip-hop or or singing. So I guess I, I there's no way I would have been, yeah. you know, and then off the mark. When she comes in, it's like such a cool, powerful vibe. Uh, I love that. Like there was a little, literally a minute long intro before you had vocals or anything. So, you know, you really got that build up. It's the first song on the album. We're speaking of the song Introvert, if anybody wants to uh, like follow along. And, and this one I really liked. And I picked it as my, my favorite discovery of the week. That's awesome. So, so that was your number one. Yeah. Number one of this week. Uh, so not Donald Fagan. Definitely. This was a good okay. one. Okay. That's, you and, know what? I think that was up there for me. Yeah. And then last we have GameX Simmons, Sloan Coax Me. This, I knew Sloan, Canadian band. We've heard them for a while. Uh, but I forgot, I never, like, again, like I know songs, but I forget titles or I'm not sure about the exactly. titles. So or names when I listen to this, we were right away like, oh yeah, I love this track. It's had that bit of that, like almost like, you know, like they was filmed in like the Rolling Stones, Beatles type of like uh, era back when there was like the TV show. Right. Yeah. And then at one point we're like watching the video. We're like, hey, this looks like um, what's his name from Oasis. Mick, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's his name? And then Mick Jagger. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny. It was well done. But this is a like brilliant tune. I love this song. Really good. Tom so Petty good. vibes a bit, you know. Definitely Tom Petty vibes. And again, like it looked like they just walked into the set of the Ed Sullivan show exactly yeah. preserved the way it was and said, okay, guys, just make the video the way you used to make the video. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely, it was cool to see. And, and I think it's cool when you can do that in a fun way as well, because it's definitely been done. Like we've seen Danny California, like, but when you could do it in your own way, I think that makes it awesome. Yeah. And so I was thinking also like uh, for my suggestions, I don't know if you have a suggestion. I was thinking. Uh, I do. Like, so I, yeah, okay. So I ended up like getting um, one of these, like this thing just fell on my radar somehow. I don't know how, but thank you. Um, Pretty Lights, which I'm not too familiar with the artist, like, you know, who he is and how he works and all that stuff. But like when I listened, the album I listened to was called A Color Map of the Sun. And this Ooh. to me is just like, the fattest beats with like horn sections, grooves, and just total vibe. Like for me, sonically, this thing sounds hmm. incredible. I wish I could mix stuff to sound this good, you know? That's like, wow. that's that was my suggestion. So definitely check out any song on this album. So Pretty Lights is the artist and a color map of the sun is 2013 release that I still like. It just hit me and I like thought I'm going to definitely suggest this. You? That's awesome. I'm, I'm definitely going to add that right after the show. My suggestion for everybody out there, this is a bit of a, a maybe a different song for my wheelhouse, but that's the idea, is going to be Fantasia by Roy Blair. Uh, this comes off a song called 
uh, sorry, an album called Graffiti. It's a three song project. And I actually discovered this, Joe, from a now, if you guys have a favorite artist on Spotify, I highly recommend you go to their artist page, scroll down and look to see if they have created any playlists, because you may be surprised to know ah. your favorite artist probably has a playlist of their favorite songs, which I think is such a cool way to get to know your favorite artist. Um, but I found Frank Ocean's playlist of his favorite songs, and this happened to be one of them. And uh, so, like I say, guys, you know, if you like somebody's music, chances are you're going to like their influences. So I highly recommend yeah. you go check that out. This is like you said at the top, it's the most diverse and like interesting and quirky kind of like list we've gotten so far. So definitely thanks to everyone for participating and uh, keep an eye out for the next one. Uh, every Friday I put them up and then uh, we talk about it on the show. So now we're going to hop into our interview portion of the show with the man himself, Guitar Zach. Make sure to go follow him on all of his social media, especially his TikTok page. The info is down below in the description. This is an awesome conversation for any up and coming artists, especially ones who are looking yeah. to increase that social media presence. And like we talk about in this episode, Zach isn't the number one social media fan either himself, but that's why I think it's so inspiring and we can learn so much from him because, you know, many artists wish they could just play their music and not have an account. This is the happy medium between the two. Cool. We got the man himself, Guitar Zach, joining us. What's <laughs> happening, my man? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to I'm meet you well, as well. Thank you. Thanks for calling into the show. We've uh, we've been big followers of what you've been doing on TikTok and and watching you. I think it's been at least for a year now, right, Joe, on, on TikTok? Yeah. I mean, like, look, you know, all cards <laughs> on the table. Uh, we you know we have our uh, TikTok, like everybody has their TikTok. And, you know, we've been trying to put our content and stuff. And I kept seeing, you know, Zach liked your video. Zach liked your video. Zach liked your video. You know. So then I'm like, I'm looking. I'm like, well, this kid. You know, this guy. Oh, sorry if I call you kids because I'm old. But anyway, so this guy's like, I'm like, this guy, he kicks ass, man. I'm like, I gotta hit him up to come and join the show. So and also like the idea was to have you as a young, uh, you know, guitar player, a musician, and 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 to just really get your vibe on like what's it like being in the industry today, or what's it like being a guitar player with these massive tools with an opportunity for massive exposure, you know, how do you see that? I think that's what's amazing to me is that you discovered me just from me liking your videos. Mm. I think that's yeah. like, that's testament to how powerful social media is for us. Cause first of all, I had no idea Sound Mojo was even a thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I'm familiar with Watch Mojo cause I grew up with it. <laughs> that's right. it. When I saw that you followed me, obviously that was pretty cool. I had no idea you existed. And... Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Like no, we're trying to get like uh, you know the, the idea between uh, uh, you know well, everybody knows Watch Mojo and like in 2019 they wanted to start you know a sort of like a music label promo channel to help independent artists and promote independent artists in their videos. You know, so uh, yeah, so that's it. That's the beauty of like you know you're all the way on the other side of the ocean, you know, and like uh, or anywhere in the world, and we could just discover amazing talent you know it is yeah, incredible sure. to see so zach maybe if you could take the people back obviously we know you for playing guitar um how long have you actually been playing guitar and maybe tell us uh, about how that came into your life okay so yeah i've been playing since i was about 15. so I, i'm 21 now it started out as like a hobby with my friends in school and then i kind of got into music production which i studied in college and from there, I'd formed a few bands. I got into writing music and performing live. Like, that's my favorite thing to do is perform. So mm -hmm. I took every opportunity I could to perform and kind of pursued that at university. So I have a little bit of experience, like, writing with a band and releasing music. And, yeah, I've got the bug to continue it. So <laughs> it's definitely something. <laughs> so I'll where keep. would you perform in the beginning days, like in the university days especially? At university? Um I was based in Guildford, which is a town outside of London. So we'd play mostly locally. And we'd also did a few shows within London at small bars and pubs and places like that. And so, yeah, the hard thing is, is getting the contacts and finding the yeah. connections that make these events possible. Because on your own, it's, it's difficult <laughs> starting no out doubt. fresh. It's hard to do anything really on an island. So, I mean, when there's a lot of cities, obviously around, you know, a Mecca like London, is everybody in these small cities, are they going to London for everything? Or is, or is there independent scenes in these small cities as well for music? For definitely, yeah. There's okay. 
everywhere you go that they have their own kind of independent music scene but i think london is the place to be for music in my experience mm. yeah is it mainly definitely. like uh pubs uh and stuff you play like in uh, pubs or is there like more like music a type of like uh venues you know i we've done a couple of music like actual venues quite okay. well respected venues but then a lot of it is pubs and small places and anywhere that will have you really you've got to just take what you can get <laughs> yeah and is it like a paying scene or like do you get paid to play in those type of pubs we've, uh, we've earned a little bit of money but nothing nothing that yeah. really pays back what we've put seems, in <laughs> yeah it seems to be the story everywhere pretty much everywhere yeah that's the thing right so i mean I, at what point exactly did did you start with the band were you the, the person who said okay i want to start a band or, or were you approached by somebody how exactly the, did that work out I think when I started university, basically the first people, the first group of friends that I made, I suggested the idea of starting a band because they'd nice. been there for a year or so before me and they'd done things before. So they were into it and we got right into it straight away, really. Hmm. So and that what was kind of my of mission. <laughs> yeah, what was that? That was like my mission as I got into uni is I need to get into a band as quickly as possible. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I mean, that, that's probably a good place to do it, right? Because, I mean, obviously you can connect with people on things like TikTok, but, I mean, it's probably easier when, you know, you're in a university. I'm sure there's a big pool of people to draw from. Yeah, and I think it's the best place to, like, get that experience and putting yourself out there because especially from where I'm from, it's such a small place. Like, Jersey's tiny. The music scene is very small and it's kind of... We're kind of limited by where we are because we live on an island and <laughs> mm. it's rare for music to get off the island and is it a literal island i mean pardon me for for not knowing my it's all right yeah no it here. is it's literally an island <laughs> wow in the, in the english channel it's about nine by five miles so okay. tiny really so small. how far <laughs> of a ride is it off of the island to to let's say london how far would that be not far it takes about an hour on the plane Okay, so, so is it, it like doesn't a take plane? long. Oh, just, just regular plane. Regular plane. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, yeah. it's easy to go back and forth, but it's not convenient, really, as a musician mm, right. living here. I guess. Well, it's kind of comparable to Vancouver and Victoria here in Canada, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's close to that mecca, but it's not directly in it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you say you started the like, guitar at fifteen. What were you doing before? Was it mostly like sports or like or and after that, how did you get into guitar? I kind of I think I got into piano first, oh, so that was kind okay. of like my introduction to music. I don't know why it just kind of came to me one day that I wanted to learn piano. I think YouTube played a big part of it because YouTube's been like my main exposure to music in general, and my dad. <laughs> he's quite into yeah, his okay. 70s and 80s rock so that's what got me into playing guitar i think so nice yeah anyone in particular that like you know like a lot of people will you know will say Jimi hendrix or slash and maybe your generation is slash or whatever like is there anyone in particular that made you say oh my god i want to do that i'm to begin with yeah i was a slash guy <laughs> <laughs> i knew that it. Was, that, was, <laughs> that was the reason i started i got my slash les paul and i was nice away. <laughs> and your marshall but, uh your marshall did you get the the what the jcm 800 is that what it was uh, no not not okay. one of them no but i do have a marshall i've got like a yeah. plexi kind of thing oh there you go yeah that's awesome i feel like slash is is so diverse in his playing in a way because he can play a, like you know the classic blues stuff you can play metal you can play straightforward rock but i feel like i can listen to slash all day like it, it doesn't get you know grating on my nerves like maybe some of the virtuoso guys oh yeah for sure i think a lot of the people that aren't haven't gone deep into his other projects kind of just see him as the guns and roses guitarist of the hat <laughs> he that's kind it. of just does one thing and that's his sound but like he has his sound and there's there's no one else that can really replicate that and yeah the, the other projects that he's done are insane i, I prefer them honestly over guns and roses oh yeah it, it, no it's doubt. funny because like i was just having a conversation with someone and it's like it's kind of like what a like what an iconic person you know like this guy will be revered for the the stance the les paul and the hat and the hair you know like i mean it's so you see a shadow when you know him yeah you know yeah. <laughs> and, then, and another reason i think personally like i you know i was never a huge you know slash fan but like i respect everything he ever did and it's like what i loved about him or what i love about him is that he plays for the song 
you know, because he'll always surprise you. It'll be a blues lick and then he'll play like this nice run where you're like, wow, I didn't think he would play like that, you know, like, so that's what I love about him. You know, the confidence is there. He doesn't need to show off. He's all worried about it, what other people think, you know what I mean? He just does slash, you know, like... So, Zach, I wanted to ask you, you know, in terms of obviously we know you mostly now for your TikTok and your videos. Um, were you experimenting with putting up music videos before TikTok or was this something that started when TikTok came around? Um, I think kind of the whole TikTok explosion back in like 2019 or whatever, whenever it was, that's when I realized it was, I mean, it started out as just something to do, you know, when quarantine and all that was going on. It was more of just an outlet for wanting to make music because i couldn't well do stuff with my bandmates it was kind of everything was put on hold for a while so that's why i got into making videos it was just a, another way for me to do what i enjoy doing yeah are you making them daily i i try to uh yeah. whenever i can i <laughs> something i want to try and do is like record in bulk so i don't have to worry so much yeah, about right being on time like i have stuff prepared because it does you know, you feel like you're missing out if you skip a day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And like, how much preparation do you put into, uh, let's say, a video? Or is it just what we see is what we get? I, it's funny because to me, like, my videos, I don't find them particularly, like, they're okay. Some, some are a lot better than others. <laughs> they're mm -hmm. okay. I don't see myself as anything spectacular. I'm kind of just doing something I enjoy and trying to, you know, find other people that, a lot, I mean, I get a lot of comments saying people enjoy my videos and that's enough for me to keep doing it. So that's all that yeah. matters, really. But yeah, um, they can take time, obviously. Um, some I can do in a few minutes. <laughs> if I've yeah, yeah. prepared something beforehand, it doesn't take long. Other times, if it's a bit more tricky, it will take an hour or so <laughs> if I'm committed enough to get it down. And then I have to edit it and put it up on YouTube and everything as well, in addition to TikTok. So yeah. It does take a decent chunk of time, especially doing it every day. Yeah. That's where the whole preparing things in, in advance is. I think that's something I need to <laughs> get sorted yeah. out. So that's been something that's been on your mind then, because I mean, the breakneck speed of social media today, I think a lot of people find that to be a challenge, but you're thinking of ways to sort of maybe cope with that a little bit better. I hate social media, if I'm honest. I hate that it takes up so much of your attention, so much of your time. I feel like... It's nuts. That, yeah, there's so much better things that you could be doing. But then again, it's such a useful tool as, a, as an artist and a musician mm -hmm. that you can't not be online, I think. I think it's the, if you're going to do anything, it's come up with a strategy and get people to find you over the internet because it's, it's more powerful than it's ever been, really. But yeah, it yeah. does take a toll if you can't manage it correctly. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure and like, you know, like we're saying stress because like, uh, you know, you got to get something up for the day. And uh, I know I, I'm in the same situation, but like um, I was wondering, like, I know like you get like um, a lot of suggestions. People say, I'll do this or play this. But like, what, how do you plan what you're going to do or, you know, what comes that you heard a song that day? And you're like, oh, I'm going to cover this. Yeah, I mean, occasionally that has been the case. Like, I'll just hear a song on the radio or something, and I'll be like, that's cool, I'll do that one. <laughs> but, Give it a try, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I see what other people are playing, and often I go down that route and kind of recreate or put my own spin on things that are currently popular. Because I think people bash trends, but if you can apply them in a way that you can showcase yourself genuinely, then it's useful. I think you should take advantage of that because it's, it's there to help you really <laughs> that's the thing as long as you don't rely on them because then you know you're mm. just as good as the trend but if you can find a way to implement it into what you already do then yeah you i think you're in the, in the golden spot there exactly yeah. yeah have you ever like not put up a video like a band like ah oh, i can't nail this one or I've, yeah it's happened and a lot of the time i put up a video and i think yeah this sucks okay <laughs> <laughs> so you're really hard on yourself more yeah, often yeah. than more often than not that is how i feel but i mm. I try and drill it into myself to just do something, even if it does suck. 
it's out there, it's out the way, and I can move on to the next thing, and maybe it'll be, it'll be better. So yeah, I think it's a lot of it so far is trial and error, and I, I'm still figuring out what works, and I need to upgrade like the quality of my videos, and I got the sound down, but yeah, the video quality is kind of limited by the space I have and things like that. So there's a lot I can do to improve. Did you have to learn video editing? Like, like or is this something that you've already done? Because I know a lot of, you know, today YouTubers like Cassius has been podcasting since he's 10, you know, so he's <laughs> wow. got like that under his belt, you know? So I'm like, I'm wondering, did you have to learn any new skills to be able to put out the videos? Um, I've done like brief video editing stuff. I've learned from tutorials on YouTube and things like that. So I can, I can work my way around video editing software okay, but it's just the basics really. So yeah. far, yeah. all I can do is just what I need to do to get the video up and, <laughs> and hey, sounding it's okay. Work. It's working, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's some people will, you know, what I like about your approach is you didn't wait. Some people will say, oh, when I get this camera, when I get this editing software, then I'll start doing videos where it's like, no, just start and then improve as you go, you know? Exactly. Yeah, I think that's something I, if anything, if I could say anything to musicians that aren't on social media, it is just the start because it doesn't matter if you suck because the way people get connected to you and you build a community is they see you grow and that's yeah. part of their connection to you so you sucking is important <laughs> because <laughs> i think people, people aren't people as hard on you that. as you are yeah. as you are on yourself either too though i think like yeah. people are you know as viewers i think people are rooting for for the person playing you know so i so maybe it's a different experience when you're watching it than when you're actually doing it i guess i'm it might just be me as a musician i'm quite aware of my limitations and obviously I'm exposed to a lot of talented people online. <laughs> you I often hear, feel yeah. like you can't really compete. But again, it's just doing what you can do because, I mean, it's paying off. Yeah, Whatever it leads to, it's, it's working in some form. <laughs> and it's not just you, right? I think that that's a common thing with musicians in general that, you know, so, so I mean, it is part of the way that you avoid that being overwhelmed by so much being out there. Is part of it by just con continuing to to be consistent yourself does that help you combat that yeah i mean over the long term i think looking back i i'm glad that i try and keep on top of things and stay consistent because as again stuff like this wouldn't happen a lot of the opportunities i've had to work with other musicians wouldn't exist if i wouldn't have just kept applying myself even when i didn't really want to or feel like i could <laughs> that's it so what were some of the best collaborations that you've had um from tech talk most recently i've i think it was a rap artist i did a guitar solo for one of their tracks so that was nice. quite interesting it's new to that but it worked out okay so i'm excited to see how that turns out that's cool that's huge. So, I mean, in terms of the band, what are your goals in the future for the band? Are you trying to use TikTok to, I would assume, drive more people to, to you in general with all the music you're doing? Yeah. So the band that I had back in uni, that was part of the reason I was on TikTok. It worked quite well, actually. We managed to bring in quite a few new listeners, but that band I'm not with anymore. Okay. But again, like the, with the projects I'm doing now, part of the reason I'm trying to build more of a community for myself is so that I have a, a base, like a foundation that I can launch this new band off of. I think that's quite important and yeah. So I really want to kind of have things ready from the get go. You know, it's hard starting a band and having no one there that's interested. Whereas if I can even just through myself, bring in a few more people that might be interested in what I'm doing outside of my own profile then I think it should work out quite well. And again, like what I think is really cool is when I'm collaborating with people, doing things like that, having an audience of my own is an awesome way to just support other people because through yeah. working with others, I'm giving an extra audience to whoever needs it. Like if I'm to work with someone who maybe doesn't have as many followers, that's thousands of new faces that could possibly see them. So. I think, yeah, collaborating with people online is a must. <laughs> yeah. And who knows where those people can end up in the future, right? They could end up with, you know, more followers than all of us combined one day. And then, you know, you help that person when they were first starting and then they can pay that forward. So, I mean, it, it must be exactly. an interesting experience. 
yeah, a, a lot of the creators that I've kind of familiarized myself with early on on TikTok have gone on to like the Mars ahead of me now. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it's so overwhelming and it's kind of crazy to see people do so well when you knew them when they were such a tiny account. But <laughs> yeah, must be a little bit surreal in a way. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm studying a master's right now. I'm kind of focusing on social media as a marketing space for musicians and nice. yeah, trying to learn from others and seeing what works and what doesn't is something I'm trying to really kind of go deeper into. So, cause it can be anything from just ones doesn't you have to be to do with your talent. It can be your personality, your fashion, mm -hmm. like all of this plays a part in what keeps people's attention. A lot of the people yeah. that, do insanely well on insanely talented musicians, but they still have a talent. And that's, I think your personality is your main selling point online. Mm. Regardless of what you do, you, you can find a space that people are gonna be interested in following. There's always like a unrealized audience of people out there. Has there been any specific tricks or tips that you could maybe give to artists that you found were particularly helpful, whether it's like, you know, certain things with the way you write your hashtags, your descriptions, anything mm -hmm. in sort of SEO related that you, that you could give us? For TikTok, I wish I could. I think SEO is a lot more important on YouTube. I see right. the TikToks now starting to focus more heavily on SEO kind of stuff because you can now discover TikToks through search engines and stuff. It kind of suggests yeah. TikTok videos to you. So it is heading that way, but previously, I think, because I've tried all kinds of hashtag strategies and no hashtags and yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I don't see it making a difference. I think it's just okay. the, the content, it's all in the content. And I think if you're not engaging with other people, then other people don't really have a reason to engage with you. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I try and remind myself of that because it's something I want to focus more on is giving back to others really. Cause that's why we're all there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to, because like, uh, you know, I've been guilty of this, let's say like on Twitter where it's like, I'm just post, 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 but if you don't engage and comment and react to other people's stuff, then I, when I started doing that, I started to see the, it coming back. And then like, I still have friends from when I did like more engagement 10 years ago, I still have like actual friends, you know? And, uh, you know, so it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause as musicians, we tend to like, um, you know, uh, here's my stuff and, you know, like the people will come kind of thing where it's not true anymore. It's like you have to go to the people as much mm. as they come to you, yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely. And because like, a lot of my most successful pieces of content, they haven't exactly helped me in a way. Or maybe slightly, but in the grand scheme of things, maybe it's all it does is look good on my, prof on my profile. Mm. Like, so it hasn't engaged. translated to followers as much as maybe you would expect. In some cases it has, in some cases it hasn't. And I think, yeah, it's, it's more, you got to kind of leverage the stuff that works and find the people that are most likely to engage with you in the future. Because I see a lot of people, they do have posts that blow up and then that's it, they're sorted. <laughs> Those, this just keeps snowballing from there. But with me, it's always been kind of random and inconsistent. So I, I get like an influx of new people and then they kind of fade away. But there's always like a base following that has gradually grown over time. Right. Which is good. And I, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> do you also do like long form content? Like, like, you know, instead of just like TikToks, but like, you know, YouTube is it like more lessons or longer uh, type of content. I've definitely thought about it and it's something mm. I plan to do in soon. I want to okay. kind of make more use of youtube because i think i prefer youtube overall i want to make more long form i mean still short but long form content like because i upload a lot of my um tiktoks to youtube as well as youtube shorts but yeah i want to kind of get in more into the youtube space yeah, because I know we noticed like us too, we've been experimenting with uh, shorts and stuff, uh, you know, on, on, on YouTube and uh, they do generate a lot more views than like some of the other videos we do organically. But like, how does it translate? That's what I've been noticing. A lot of trends like shorts is blowing up, but does it translate into subscribers? Do people actually go into the channel 
and, and see the rest of your content, which is what I find I have a hard time with TikTok because like, you know, you're seeing part one, but then it's like, there's no guarantees that I can, you know, go see part two. I have to scroll through, which I find like YouTube seems to be more like, I guess a, a bit more traditional TV kind of like where you're like, mm. I, I know how to find myself. Anyways, it's my preferred platform, but I'm just curious to see what you thought about it. Yeah, because I mean, I've been on YouTube for as long as I've been on TikTok, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's taken, it took me like three years to get to 2000 subscribers. And now I'm within the last six months, I've gone from 2000 to nearly 5000. Yeah. And a lot of that is from you have a couple of videos that do well. And from there, all those people that watch that video start getting recommended your other stuff. And right. you kind of grow a lot quicker. I mean, I say that I'm still it's a tiny account, but I've noticed a significant increase in just impressions on my YouTube channel from a few successful posts. And then they turn other posts into That's successful it. ones as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything kind of takes off. That snowball like effect, a, right? It, yeah. It's insane to see. Um, you know, we do have one question that we do like to ask everybody, sort of a, a fantasy uh, league question when it comes to music. Um, and it's about a dream venue. So, you know, this could be one place that you would imagine performing and it could also be with anybody dead or alive, any artist for your dream show. Well, I guess um, I haven't mentioned it yet, but my favorite guitarist is a Japanese musician called Tomoyazu Hote. And he's been around since the 80s. Hmm. Um, he has a, probably the biggest influence in the way I play and the way I hmm. write music. So I think... I mean, <laughs> it would be cool to play with him. I know he plays the Tokyo Dome a lot. Wow, awesome. He does a lot of big events. But he's, I've seen him in London, and he, when he's over in London, he does a lot of smaller intimate shows, which are really cool. Yeah. Which I think wow. the intimate stuff is the best. <laughs> oh, yeah. They both 100%. have a kind of special atmosphere to them. But yeah, intimate venues are... Awesome. I've gotten to see, let's say, Dave, David Gilmore in a in a in Toronto, like with a, in a place of two thousand people. You know, so it's like it's not seventy thousand people where you normally go see Pink yeah. Floyd. You like, you know, mm. like you're lost in the crowd. Whereas here, it was like somebody could yell out David and he would yeah. respond. You know, like and I was like, <laughs> wow, what a dream. So uh, I, you mentioned the Japanese guitar player. I saw that post on your TikTok where you're, you. I think you mentioned three and Hote was one of them, and there's another two guys. So obviously, like. Japanese rock or Japanese guitar players are, uh, you know, a big influence to you. How did you get into that? Is it anime I, related? Um, no, funny enough, oh. it's YouTube again. <laughs> okay. Just being a avid yeah. YouTube watcher. That's right. <laughs> I discovered Going most down of my the rabbit music hole. <laughs> through YouTube. Yeah, just it's random amazing. suggestions on YouTube have led me to discover some of my favorite music. Wow. That's definitely a new for me. I never really heard of uh, Hote, so, so I'm definitely going to check him out. You know, like, uh, he's he's one of Japan's most celebrated musicians, and he's got a ton of music out there. So I, I recommend taking oh, a look. <laughs> nice. I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, another tip for anybody out there that I've been doing is is if you have Spotify, you can just Google any country, and they have a top fifty playlist for that country. But it's constantly <laughs> rotating, so it's updating to whatever the top fifty is at that time. And uh, the Japan one is awesome. I've heard some Japanese country. I don't know if you check that oh, wow. out, but the Japanese country is pretty smoking, man. <laughs> I know, everything they do is like <laughs> yeah, everything they do is legit, man. You know, I know a Japanese. I think the Japanese are just you know awesome. At, yeah, anything they touch turns to gold type of thing. So yeah, it's amazing. I do Very find cool like their stage productions and just the quality of their the yeah. effort they put into their performances and the giving to the audience is like. It's a step above anyone else. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, you just like those Japanese TV game shows were just like, what? yeah, it's, what's it's going ridiculous. on? Like, yeah, it's like always on another level, always thinking. It's almost like if you t if someone told somebody like, no, nah, you can't do that. Oh, here we go. We're going to do it. And it's just <laughs> as crazy it, exactly. as it could be, you know? <laughs> yeah. No doubt. So, Zach, uh, what's next for you, man? I mean, we're really excited to see what you've been doing on TikTok. I know you mentioned maybe Batch recording so that you can start uploading you know maybe in, in bigger batches yeah so i mean ideally i want to be uploading every day and i want to up the quality of my videos but um yeah i'm, I'm trying to find the time to focus on the projects i'm a part of at the moment because i'm really excited to get that stuff out there 
And yeah, what I saw on your website, you can submit music to Sound Mojo. So that's yeah. definitely something I'm going to. That's right. I'll I let you guys that know. <laughs> I check that out. The intermission, the links for SoundCloud link is we'll we'll put it in the description below for sure. Yeah, but, uh, that, that's a band that I've been working with locally here in Jersey. Yeah. So we're doing. We've got some things planned. Some music to nice. be recorded in the next few months. So awesome. I would awesome. love to like uh, you know like uh, maybe have you even with Sound Mojo collaborate on some stuff like maybe we'll do uh, some shorts or like uh, guitar riffs or I don't know what or a guest a riff or something and it would be interesting to have like for sure yeah uh, I'm very yeah, open to awesome. anything I know I'm putting you on the spot there but yeah <laughs> <laughs> no that sounds Sweet. good to me let me know awesome guitar Zach thank you so much man we re we really appreciate it and keep in touch yeah we'll do thank it's been you. nice speaking awesome, to you man. and thank you for the opportunity because I'm surprised that I even managed to be here so. <laughs> wow we're glad to have you 100 percent We want to give a huge shout out to Guitar Zach for joining us on this brand new episode of Inner Sleeve. You know, like I was saying off the top, Joe, I'm always inspired by someone who takes the steps to their journey as part of their journey, whether they like every step or not. You know, <laughs> there are people who love social media. There's people who are addicted to social media, but there's also a lot of musicians, especially who just don't want to bother with it. And they just want to play their guitar or sing or do what they do. And I think it's it's very telling to hear the insight of someone who knows what they have to do and is willing to take those steps yeah and like i the reason why i reached out to him is because like i i was on tiktok and i kept seeing every day was post, posting uh licks and stuff uh, and i said oh i'd love to have you know not an established artist i don't even think he's released officially released music it's just more yeah. of someone a guitar player somewhere in the world maximizing you know, it doesn't have 7 million followers, you know, all that crazy, like everybody loves to hear those sensational numbers and stuff. So this is someone like you were saying that like, I'm not a, necessarily, he's not a fan of it, but he knows that like, it's part of the game, you know, don't hate the, what is it? Don't hate the player, hate, hate the, game, the game, don't hate the game, That's right. something like that, whatever. <laughs> so it's like, he's just doing his thing the best he can. He's learning. He's also studying music marketing and stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see like, follow him as uh, through the years and see how he goes but definitely i loved like uh his soft-spoken nature you know and like doesn't take things too seriously and, like he knows that some don't yeah. do as well and some do well and stuff so he's learning you know and that's why i wanted to bring him on the show because you know technically we're all learning to navigating in this whole stuff you know all this stuff that's a fact and again we appreciate him taking the time to come on the show and share some of his insight with us hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of inner sleeve and if you did we hope you hit that subscribe button we're on the road to thirty thousand subscribers it's going to be sooner than later so definitely make sure to keep hitting that button and we look forward to seeing you guys there also when you hop over to the youtube channel make sure to give us your input on the YouTube community tab. Of course, that's where we put polls and different places for you to send us suggestions, just like you saw on today's show. We can't wait to see and hear you guys' suggestions on the next episode of the podcast. And of course, make sure to follow us on social media. We're at Sound Mojo on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. New content every single day of the week. Thanks so much for tuning into this brand new episode of Inner Sleeve. We'll catch you guys next week.